Welcome to the Vector Garden YouTube channel. My name is Monika and I can't stop thinking about how to build stuff using Illustrator. This happens a lot and it happened only recently at the farmer's market. So I found this orange wrapped in this nice colored paper with that typography on it of a rainbow text in rainbow color and bent like a rainbow. And of course, I was thinking about, well, how can I build this in Illustrator? And not only that, the methods differ in their ability to be changed and bent and reused. So in this episode, we are going to compare these methods and then discuss their pros and cons. So let's dive right into that. So let's check out method number one. Pretty straightforward. We're going to use a gradient and an envelope. I've used the German version of the text because it has the descenders, which the English version has not. Now, first of all, we're going to set up the gradient. So let's go to window gradient and then let's set up the gradient. So. I'm going to create the gradient stop, double click it and set the color and then create the next gradient stop by double clicking into the rainbow and then double click again and again and then yet another time and one more. And then let's double click the black one and there is the gradient. You can adjust them. I just set them up and eyeballed it. And when you have done that, you go to the swatches panel and there you can create a new swatch and call that rainbow. So you can use the gradient in a different way. I'm just showing this here. So what you can do first, let's make this broader. So in order to be able to work more precisely, what you can do is duplicate this one and duplicate this one. And when you then set these two to the same position, which is about 14.25 if you want exact dividers like so. And then you can enter the same value for this one. And you get a hard edge in your gradient. I have created that kind of gradient already. So it's one of these and you see this is set up in exactly that fashion. So let's go out of here. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, get that gradient on the text. And this is already kind of a test of our abilities because we have to use the appearance panel. And then let's first get rid of the existing color. So let's set this to none and then go down here and set up a new fill. And then, of course, we can apply a gradient to it like so. And then what we can do is use the gradient tool and let's just set up our gradient. Great. So next thing we need to do is bend this text. So let's go to object and envelope distort make with warp like so. You see two things happen. The text gets quite wide, which is not very nice. And well, the rainbow is just straight. Let's first solve the thing about the rainbow. Let's go to object envelope distort and envelope options. And there you can select to distort linear gradient fields. So this is a linear gradient, not a radial one. And that's why this works. So nice gradient. Okay. The text can be solved as well. So what you can do is double click that to get into the envelope 
and then let's go to the character panel and set this up to maybe 90% to make the letters kind of condensed and when they get distorted by the envelope then it works again. So this is the first method of how to get our rainbow type. Next one, let's take a look at method number two. And in this method, we are going to use a pattern swatch. So let's first set up that and I'm going to make a very long pattern. And just by duplicating these rectangles that have swatches applied. So let's make a duplicate. Smart guides help with aligning them. And just like so, let's zoom in slightly like so. Make the next line and duplicate this again. And yet another time. And then we are done with this pattern shape. So let's condense that slightly like so and then we can drag it right into the swatches panel to make the pattern like so. Let's get rid of that but I'm just going to move it to the side. And we need of course another text so let's make the English text this time. Okay. It's still condensed so let's leave it like that because we are going to distort it again. In order to apply a pattern, you can just click on the pattern and this one matches, but that is not a given. So you see when I move it around, the pattern doesn't go along with it. We can solve that, of course. I'm going to go into the preferences and there we see transform pattern tiles. And when that is checked, you see, I can move it around. But still, the applying the pattern depends on where the text is. So let's make another text. And like so, and move it in here and apply the pattern. And you see, the pattern gets applied at a different position. Because it depends on where the text is of how the pattern gets applied to it. And that cannot be solved by that setting. So that is that. Now, in order to distort this, we're going to object envelope distort and let's make that with warp again. And you see again, we've got an issue with the pattern and we've already learned that. So let's go to object, envelope distort, envelope options, and there we can also distort the pattern fields. You can also adjust the fidelity, which is the precision. So if you don't like that, make it a higher value, like so. And this is how our rainbow looks. I'm going to undo that because there's a different place where you can access those distortions. They can also be applied as effects. And I'm going to first go into the options again and you see distort pattern fills. Once you have checked that, it's checked for this file at least and it runs until you re relaunch Illustrator. So it's not on forever now. Let's go to effect and then let's go to the warp and check out the arc. And you see the envelope settings don't apply to the effects. The same goes for the gradient. So if I apply a gradient in here and it's not just, I cannot just click on it. So let's go to the appearance panel and Let's uncheck the gradient here and create the new fill and then apply the gradient like so. And then let's use the gradient tool. And you see 
the gradient distortion doesn't get applied either. So the envelope options don't apply to the envelope effects. That's kind of important to remember. So we know two methods. Let's get to number three. And number three uses different kind of text and also a different method to get the color into the text. Let's first take a look at the different kind of text. And I'm going to use path text this time. Path text won't distort the letters. So let's start with the path. And for that, I'm going to create a circle and then just take the scissors tool and cut that circle like so. And that's that. And let's just take away the fill and apply a stroke to it. The stroke will be deleted in a minute anyway. So let's take the text tool and put the text onto it. Just like that, I'm going to take the German text again. And let's use the path text interface to move the text on the path. And I'm going to center it on the path. So like so, that's it. In order to get the gradient into it, this time we couldn't just use a linear gradient because that wouldn't distort in any way. But we could think about using a radial gradient. So let's go to the appearance panel and let's first delete that fill and then create a new fill for that text object like so. And then we can apply the gradient like so. Linear gradient doesn't work, so let's go to Window and Gradient and then set this to a radial gradient. And now what we can do is just adjust this radial gradient. For this to work, all the gradient stops need to be moved to the outside and we might need to move them even more to the outside. So. Let's first leave it like so, and then let's get the gradient tool. We need that to position the gradient in the text. Let's make it larger. And then again, move it. And you see, we're kind of getting where we want to get with this. Needs some adjustment, but you see how this will work. So you might need to move the gradient stops even farther to the outside of the gradient and then adjust this slightly more and then you might get there in the end, like so. And somehow you always need to go back and forth to get there. So that would be one method to get the gradient into it. But we've got another option. So let's first get rid of those extra fills again. So I'm going to, well, let's first make a duplicate and then let's get rid of that like so. And then we have the default fill again. I've kept these colored bars and the other thing we could do is get these into a shape that we need. So let's first make them slightly smaller so it matches the text. And then let's go to Object, Envelope Distort and make with Warp. Once this is applied and you see it doesn't really match, then you can use the options in the control panel to further adjust it. And you see, to get it up there, needs some more, like so. This looks quite OK. So let's move it below the text. And then let's select them both and go to Object, Clipping Mask, and Make. And there we've got rainbow colors inside the text. 
The text can also be changed, so you can take the text tool and then change the text and the objects inside the mask don't move. So they just keep their position when you enter other text. So this is method number three. Let's get to method number four. And method number four doesn't need extra objects and doesn't need patterns or gradients to create the gradient inside the text. So we are just going to create this inside the appearance panel. Let's first set the text. And for this to work, we need the text to be converted to a compound shape. So let's go to Window Pathfinder. And in there, we can just make a compound shape. The text is still editable. So you can use the text tool and select it and edit it. We need just this to work. So now we are going to create the colors in it. So let's do this. And I want to see the text when doing it. So I'm going to leave this fill and create a new fill and just set this to the center color and the center color is this green. And we want this to be a rectangle. So let's go to effect, convert to shape, rectangle, like so. And then let's reduce the height. And this is okay, like so. Next thing, we are going to need a copy of it and then let's create the other ones. So the next one is a yellow one. And the yellow one needs to move. So for moving it, we're going to use Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform it. And for the transformation, we need to set the reference point, which is the bottom in this case. And then let's just make this larger. And you see, like so, and create the next one, make it orange, and then let's edit the transform effect, like so. And then let's make the next one in red and again edit the transform effect like so okay and then let's create the next ones and those next ones should move to the bottom so needs to be a blue one and then let's go into the transform effect and set it up there and then of course needs to be smaller like so and you see I've actually made them quite large so they are too large for this text but I'm leaving it like this so when following along just create smaller offsets with the transform effect. So let's create the next one here and make that in a darker blue. And again, in the transform effect to the top and then like this. And then we need yet another one like so. And there we've got the rainbow. Okay. So we don't need this fill anymore. I'm going to delete it. And we've got the stroke up there. And the next thing we need to apply is to get this in the shape of the letters. So let's go to Effect, Pathfinder, Crop. And 
there we have the crop, but it's up there. And up there we don't have shapes, so the shapes are only there after we have applied all these. So let's get this and move it down there. And there we have our rainbow colors in the text and the crop. Nice. But of course we also want to bend this. So let's go to the effects warp arc and there they also get bent like so. And again this one needs to happen after the crop. And there we have our rainbow colors just created from the text with Pathfinder effects and a stack of appearances. So that last method using only the appearance panel is of course really clever, but that method is not really practical because when using Pathfinder effects all kinds of things might happen. And this one really gets very strange when you edit the text. You see it behaves rather weird. Now the other ones have their disadvantages as well. When you work with that clipping mask then of course you need to adjust a lot the, the bend of the mask and the text and to get it fitting. And also when you, when you edit that text the contents of those masks they don't change as well. So you have to take care of those descenders and ascenders you might have in your text because after editing the text it might not fit. So in this case it's okay but when you don't take care of descenders and then later have them the whole thing might break. The Gradients are the easiest to control because gradients adjust to that. So when I change this text so that there are no descenders in it, then the gradient gets adjusted accordingly. But when you have shorter or longer words, then the text looks different because of that bend. So I'm going to revert that and you see we've got differently looking text because of that envelope that has been applied. So this might or might not work but when your text is of different lengths then you need to apply a lot of adjustment. And then there is everything that contains the warp effect. Then you see the gradients or patterns don't get warped, which is a disadvantage as well. So we have to choose the method very carefully and think ahead of what we may need in our workflow after applying this to the text. So these were the methods of building the rainbow text. Thank you for following until this point and watching the video until the end. If you haven't already, please subscribe, please like the video and tell your friends about it. See you until next time.